By the end of this video, you'll be an expert at identifying the major types of chemical reactions. So we'll look at some examples and you'll get some practice. Let's start with a simple one, combination, also called synthesis. The simplest type of reaction to identify is called combination. It's also called synthesis. So when we look at a combination or synthesis reaction, we have one, two things, and they're coming together to form one compound. So that is a combination. They're combining. So pause and identify the combination, also called synthesis reactions, from the list below. So for the first one here, we have two things coming together to form one substance. That's going to be a combination reaction. For A plus B yields C, you'll often see combination reactions as this kind of general form here. So this is a combination reaction. H2 plus O2 yields H2O. Again, combination. And note, I won't balance reactions in this video since we really just want to understand the type of reaction. Here, it looks kind of like a combination, but reversed. We start with one thing and we end up with two. So this is not a combination reaction. This is called a decomposition reaction. And our last reaction, that is combination. So the opposite of combination, that's decomposition, something breaking down. For example, we have H2O2, hydrogen peroxide. That'll break down in the presence of a catalyst into water and oxygen. We have the one thing here breaking down into two different things. That's a decomposition reaction. So pause and determine which of the following are decomposition reactions. In the first one, I've actually balanced this equation, but when you're looking at type of reaction, you really kind of ignore the coefficients. So we have NaCl breaks apart into Na and Cl2. One thing is breaking into two. That's a decomposition reaction. Here we have the general form for a decomposition reaction. AB breaks apart into A plus B. That's decomposition. Here we have two things, and we end up with two things. So that's not decomposition. In this case, since the copper, it's pushed the silver out, that's a single displacement reaction, so not decomposition. Here again, AB plus C gives us AC plus B. We have two things here, two things here. This is actually the general format for the single displacement reaction above, not decomposition. Finally, we have the one thing, and in this case, it breaks apart into three things. We still consider that decomposition, because the one thing is being broken down into more than just one thing. So that's the decomposition reaction. Next up is the single replacement reaction. Sometimes it's called a single displacement reaction. So with a single replacement reaction, one of the substances, it pushes the other out, and then it's by itself. So the magnesium, it's pushed the hydrogen out, and now we have just hydrogen by itself. These are the bubbles you see in the reaction below. The magnesium now, that's with the chlorine, magnesium chloride. That's a single displacement reaction. So pause and see if you can identify the single displacement reactions here. So the first one is similar to our example. Magnesium, it's going to push the copper out. Copper is by itself. Magnesium is with the sulfate, magnesium sulfate. This is a single displacement reaction. And this is the general form. We have A pushes B out, B's by itself. Now A and C, they're together. Single displacement. Here we have two things switching places. And since they're switching places, this isn't single displacement. This is actually a double displacement, so it's not single. This is a combination or synthesis reaction, so that's not single. And here we have a little bit of a different format, but the chlorine pushes the bromine out, so the bromine's by itself. So this is also single displacement. In this case, it's a bit different. We have halogens involved, but you will see these occasionally. Note, for single replacement reactions, we can determine if they actually will take place using the activity series. There's a link in the description to help you do that. We also have what are called double displacement reactions, or double replacement reactions. Because a solid is produced, these are also called precipitation reactions. So a precipitate will fall to the bottom of the test tube, like you see in the video down here, when we have a double displacement reaction. Essentially, what happens is copper and sodium, they're going to switch places. So we have copper sulfate now. We end up with copper 
hydroxide. And this is the solid. So this is the blue precipitate you see in the video. The sodium, that ends up with the sulfate. We get sodium sulfate, but that's aqueous. It stays dissolved. The point is, these two metals here, they switch places in a double displacement reaction. So pause and identify the double displacement reactions from this list. So in the first one, the silver and the sodium, they're switching places. So this is a double displacement reaction. This would be the solid here, the silver chloride. That would be our precipitate. And when we look at the general format, you can see A and C switch places. So we get AC and then BD. So we've had a double displacement reaction. Here we just have oxygen, so we can't really have a double displacement. This is combustion. That's because we have oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water involved. Not a double displacement reaction. In this reaction, the sodium, hydrogen, they switch places. The trick here is we have Na and Cl together now, and then we have this OH and an H. That's just H2O, double displacement. It's actually also called a neutralization reaction because we have a base and an acid. We make a salt and water. And the last one, since we just have aluminum here and copper here, looks like the aluminum pushed the copper out. This is a single displacement, so this is not a double. To figure out whether we'll have a precipitate, which one of those things will be a solid, we can use either the solubility rules or we could use a solubility table. And that would tell us which one is going to be a solid, which one's going to stay dissolved for double displacement reactions. There's a link in the description how to use the solubility table here and about the solubility rules. Next up, let's look at a special type of double displacement called a neutralization reaction. A neutralization reaction is where we have an acid and a base and we end up with a salt and then just water. So neutralization is kind of a special case of a double displacement reaction. We can see that the hydrogen and the sodium, they switch places. So the H, we have HOH, that's just H2O. Then we have the Na and the Cl, that makes this NaCl. So it's just a special type of a double displacement reaction. One way we can tell that we have an acid, often they'll start with H and bases will end in OH, bonded to a metal here. So it's helpful to memorize the common acids and bases. This table here is useful. It lists the strong acids, strong bases, and then a few weak acids and weak bases that you'll come across. So again, neutralization reaction, it's just a double displacement reaction, but we have an acid and a base. We end up with a salt and water. Another common type of reaction is called combustion. You'll see this quite often on exams and quizzes. Essentially, the one that you see is called organic combustion most often. That's where we have a hydrocarbon here, carbon and hydrogen. We have oxygen, and we end up with carbon dioxide and water as the products. So we'll always have oxygen, and the products will always be carbon dioxide and water. That's organic combustion, pretty much burning. Here's another example of combustion. What gives it away is the oxygen gas, the carbon dioxide, and water. Here we have a hydrocarbon. It doesn't really matter that there's oxygens with it. We have a carbon and hydrogen. We have oxygen, the products are carbon dioxide and water. That's organic combustion. Most often it's just called combustion. Do note that we have other reactions that are frequently called combustion because oxygen's involved. They're not organic combustion. We don't have carbon and hydrogen, but that oxygen, that means that these would also be called combustion. You probably also notice that these are combination reactions. Two things go to one thing. So they can be two types of reaction. So that's combustion. In this video, we talked about the major types of chemical reactions. And this is a useful table that kind of summarizes everything we talked about and gives some examples. One type that we didn't talk about was reduction oxidation reactions. These are called redox reactions where electrons are exchanged. Many of these will be redox reactions as well. Electrons will be exchanged. But these tend to be a little bit more complicated, probably best the subject of another video. So to become really proficient, you need to do lots of practice. And there's a link at the end of this video to help you practice. This is Dr. B with the different types of chemical reactions. Thanks for watching.